How's it going guys and today I'm going to be attempting to first like the first thing of today is going to be refactoring. I want to kind of tidy up the moving average algorithm, maybe re-look over it with fresh set of eyes and not do things that I shouldn't be doing and just overall tidy up that main kind of loop that we did yesterday. So quickly look into this. So I've done some pretty big refactoring. The first thing I did was write some nice easy comments to understand. So first of all, we create the main data holder, um, which is a vector of moving average stock here. Part two, we're now gonna check if we have data on a certain stock. If we have the data, that's fine. If not, you know, we need to download it. So what this does is it goes through, it goes for every ticker and all the tickers we're watching, which is AM, just for testing as AMD. We first of all check if basically does it exist in the directory. If the file does exist, perfect. We're now gonna go on to the next level, which is here. We want to check if that file is up to date first. So if the file exists, perfect. But is the data in that file the most recent? So I'm still doing the simple check, which is working quite nice for today. Basically is if the data is either got matches today's date or yesterday's date, we're good, which won't work on a Sunday. So I'll need to fix that. Now, if the file exists and is updated is false, we're then simply just going to download that data. Great. Now we're on to part three. We're going to create the four initial data points. So this loops through every ticker. Now this was changed from this where I had to create a variable to store each individual one and then when I went down here I would create base basically you can obviously tell that there's a way to loop this and it was done basically this this way now to my like it, me looking at this first of all this I didn't understand this because I asked chat GPT to like how could I do this and it basically it gave me this and then and I'm going to explain it to you now so first of all, what this dot iter does, you can see that we're, we're doing dot iter on historical offsets. Now historical offsets is just a vector of zero, one, two, three, which if you come back to here, you can kind of see here that these numbers are all just offsets. So this is minus zero, this is minus one, minus two, minus three. Oh, but look at this, this is plus one, plus two, plus three. So we're creating our offsets first. This dot iter creates an iterable or it creates an iterator, which it, it almost just sounds like you're basically going to loop over it. So instead of saying for um, history in history offsets, this kind of creates an iter. Comparing this to just doing a for loop, basically what I'm reading is, is, is it's easier to read, which I, I can completely agree. If you understand this, it looks a lot easier than a potential for loop. So after we've created the iterator, we're going to use this map command here, which, which ends here. Now to me, this looks like we're mapping over so this in in these in these straight lines it looks like I'm, I'm assuming we're now as we're iterating through history offsets this is almost like saying for history or for offset in history and referencing offset so we're going to map and we're going to map over offset and you'll notice here this is exactly the same as this basically so we're basically just calculating all of that, all of the kind of points with our offset. So, you know, for the first one, it's just gonna be the, the, the most recent 50. And then once you kind of get all the fifth, last 50, you turn it into a vector, and then you collect all the pieces into our vector vector of a string. Now I'm not fully, I don't fully grasp this. So if anyone has any, if I made a mistake or anything, you know, let me know. But that's my, that's kind of how I've understood it. It makes it really easy to read. And, you know, obviously it's quite smaller, so I might try and see if, because I do quite a lot of for loops, if, if I can implement iters and maps instead. Now on to the fourth part, which is the main loop. This is not fully done yet. I've actually not started on this yet. I'm just going to show you what it looks like now. So now the main game loop is just, I'm going to work on actually getting potential signals working. And so I was saying is I'm basically going to try and um, get some potential calls going here. So it'll tell me if it, if it is bullish or bearish.
I've now got a rough version running here back on the server. You can see here this is one of my this is a server I have. And basically what's going on is we've we've kind of made some insane progress. Um the first thing that was really nice was I the f the the function that basically ch you give it the tickers and it checks if it's got the most up to date data in those files. I put this in a function and it's um it's just it's just just huge and trash, which is going to be really it just kind of helps clean up the space. And so you can see here even here, I'm checking every loop. Gotten rid of yesterday because I don't think we need it. Basically, what's going on is the main loop just loops through every historical um like every all the data the main data we have for, for each stock. And then it checks if it's bullish or bearish. And we have the print statement basically showing every everything it's checking. And and then basically here's the actual check, which is the exact same as, as the print statement I did earlier. And and if it is bullish, it'll say bullish alert, showing that you know something's open. And it'll show open. It's not actually opening along, but it's going to say open long of whatever the ticker is and at the price of this. Oh, actually, this looks like we're seriously getting close to being ready to be come finished with this algorithm which is quite fun because this one's clearly taking the longest. I think what the next steps would have to be would be actually opening trades. Now, I've, I've written here the what I just said. However, this is the this, this part is the interesting part. If we're opening trades, I think we're going to need to save the state. So what I might do is when we run this algorithm, I think I'm going to force a save file. Basically load the save file and if it doesn't exist just create one. I think that'll be good And it just kind of means that you can always you can just stay in the loop of where you're supposed to be I think this has been a really successful day. I'm gonna do my final commit. There we go So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this was um, a bit interesting. It was a bit of a long one and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye